Haiti. Tonight, the tables could be turning on the gangs in Haiti as violence and economic turmoil continues to plague the nation. The UN Security Council now targeting gang leaders and their supporters, considering travel bans and arms embargoes on anyone threatening the peace, security, or stability of Haiti. Sites like this becoming more and more common as frustration with the nation's high inflation and political turmoil boils. Black Lives Matter. Gangs gaining power over a nation trying to get back on its feet after the assassination of its president, Jovenel Moise, last year. Speaking in Washington yesterday, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said their efforts have been an uphill battle. Big parts of the, uh, the capital, other parts of Haiti, are actually controlled by gangs, not by the state. Ports are, uh, are blocked, roads are blocked, so some of the things necessary to deal with the cholera outbreak simply can't get to where they need to, to go. They have a cholera out outbreak, which is an ancient disease, cholera. That's now, from poor United water Nations with uh, contamination from in. human waste. Yeah, exactly. Things necessary to deal with the cholera outbreak simply can't get to where they need to, to go. Now, the United Nations Security Council also weighing in, their eyes set on Jimmy Chetissier also known as Barbecue, over the role his G9 gang has played in a blockade of Haiti's principal fuel terminal. A move that has dried up fuel supplies as the country already suffers from a water shortage due to a cholera outbreak that's putting 1.2 million children at risk. Okay, so like, this is, this is, this is not Africa. But this is basically Africa. This is like a piece that somebody took a chisel and just chipped off a little piece of Africa and it floated into the ocean. That's Haiti. Closest thing you can get to Africa over here in the Western world. With the Western guns. Guns at a fucking... Um, you can get guns in Haiti. Like, you know, it's not like a little village in Africa. And look what you see here. Schools are closed, hospitals are closed, and farmers are having trouble bringing their goods to the market. <laughs> Did you hear that? The, the gangs, the black people are running it. Gangs are running it. You got what you wanted. Schools are closed, hospitals are closed, and farmers are having trouble bringing their goods to the market. The United States stepping up and targeting those in support of gangs, leading to visa sanctions on 11 people so far. And China saying it supports the UN's plan to sanction gang leaders. A move that could perhaps be a step toward more peaceful days. And Stephen Rumwa joins us now here in studio. Stephen, thanks for joining Top Story. The UN announced earlier today that Haiti is seeing catastrophic levels of hunger. From your reporting, what are people they're living with on the ground and how is it connected to what you just reported? Yeah, these situations are sort of feeding into one another. That gang violence is compounding the problems of food and fuel shortages. Those surging prices and supply issues have led to protests that have also brought the country to a standstill in that chaos, allowing the gang situation to become even worse. The World Food Program says half the population is facing acute hunger for the first time ever. Many problems here worsening each other and the situation just continuing to become more and more desperate. Yeah, a perfect storm that Haiti has been dealing with for so long. Stephen Romo, thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app. And this would be Haiti every day, if not for a handful of gliders. Yeah. Good evening. I'm Gabe Gutierrez in for Tom. Tonight, we begin with that deadly rampage in Raleigh, North Carolina, that was unfolding. Cool. Yeah, but, um, yeah, you, you're right. Without, 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 uh, uh tonight, the tables could without the, um, a few, a few gliders holding it all together. Um, I mean, doing God's work, doing God's work over there, keeping these people alive. The schools are closed, the hospitals are closed, the ports are closed. It's um, and those gliders are, are, are like nakedly racist. They don't have any good intentions with the black people. It's 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 just interesting how they do that stuff. 
amidst being called all these names because I'm telling you right now, you call some some people some names, it's well, oh, fuck y'all, they we ain't doing that. Shit. Some we would we would stop doing that shit. if we were doing a some long shit, time ago, a long yeah, time ago, we would have told you, oh, shit, what are they talking? Shit? I mean, fuck them, man, they fuck them then. Yeah, fishermen's in the back, man. Oh, uh, No. The nation of Haiti is in free fall, just 600 miles off Florida's <laughs> coast. The country... Free fall. <laughs> I look like kings of the garbage heap. God damn it. The nation of Haiti is in free fall, just 600 miles off Florida's coast. The country that is no stranger to struggle is facing a confluence of humanitarian, security, and political crises. Millions do not have enough food. Cholera is spreading. Gang violence has reached previously safe areas, and the government appears powerless to provide solutions. Nick Schifrin has our story and a warning. Some of the images are disturbing. In this Port-au-Prince hospital run by Doctors Without Borders, the patients are survivors of a country that's collapsed. Their society, like their legs, are fractured, and they suffer the wounds of war ravaging the Haitian capital. More than a quarter are gunshot victims, including this teenager. We're keeping him anonymous from the gangs that shot him. When I was looking at my stomach, I saw a big hole here and another one here. I didn't die because they gave me care. He's from Cité Soleil, Port-au-Prince's biggest slum, where residents try to survive not just choking poverty, but also a recent wave of intense violence. He was filming this video of a gang tearing down a home when the bullet hit. We are in the middle of a war. You sleep, it's war. You wake up, shots are fired. What I'm trying to say is that it was the day for me to take a bullet. But it's not only me. I'm not the only victim. Violence escalated in July when new battles raged between rival gangs fighting for territory, including G-Pep and the G-9. Led by former police officer Jimmy Cherize, known as Barbecue. They use excavators to raise each other's neighborhoods. In broad daylight, gang members... Jimmy Cherize, known as Barbecue. They use excavators to raise each other's neighborhood. That's what they're using the machinery that the white man gave them for, to destroy things. They're not using that shit to build nothing. You can't fix that, man. Yeah, they ain't yeah, digging well. Barbecue, barbecue's got that charisma, though. <laughs> Yeah, you can yeah, yeah. You got that sun maker. Yeah, you give him that mic and it's like, damn, I really I, maybe we should be tearing this shit up. He really selling this shit. Oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> yeah, listen, man. Hey, hey man. Look, the it's it's telling to me that that's what they're using that shit. That they've shut down the schools, they've shut down the hospitals, they've blocked the ports, you can't get any gas. You can't get fucking um, aid from other countries. And they're using the heavy machinery to go tit for tat, tearing up each other's neighborhoods. White man took his hands off them for what? Because that, that guy who was the president, I think he was in there for the gliders, right? He was like a puppet, right? That guy who was, got killed. The president who got killed. I, I think. I think so. I don't know the details, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Usually, these like really unstable countries have just puppets. Yeah, I've never, I've never known too much history about Haiti. I just know it's always been crazy. Well, they he like, was, they like uh, he was they also like... uh, preventing his country from uh, getting uh, Pfizered. Well, they like to blame it on us. You know that, right? Yeah, everything. You know, France or the U.S., that's what they blame it on. Yeah, right. Yeah, down there. 
because yeah, we yeah. stole all their non-existent resources. I mean, it looks really. You just showed uh, some pictures of the gang with the guns pointed up in the air. I you showed you showed us some video of some kids in uh, St. Louis look just like that. Yeah, I mean, just like that. Yeah, I, I think those kids in St. Louis. I don't think they can fuck with these kids. Well, yeah, they're a little better trained, I guess. You know? These kids out here, uh, I just think they're just more rougher. I think the kids that come from Haiti are, are, are way rougher than the kids from St. Louis. Yes. In broad daylight, gang members kidnap Haitians from their cars for ransom. They torch government buildings and set court documents on fire. And in mid-September, gangs seized the largest fuel terminal and are holding hostage 70% of Haiti's fuel. Barbecue taunted authorities and rallied supporters. It is true that you are going to get through into this oil terminal when we are dead. To the Haitian people, if it's true that we need to live as real human beings and for other nations to respect us, man your barricades. These are warlords. These are people who have military training and who are really a de facto force in the country. Gary Pierre Pierre is the founder of the Haitian Times, an English language newspaper. They dictate when we have water, when we have fuel, when people can go out. Now, what you're watching is basically a slow motion coup d'etat. Haiti has reached the point of a fail state right now. It is not functioning. Haitian society is furious. For months, demonstrators across the country have protested against insecurity and a lack of food and gas. As police looked on, demonstrators even looted humanitarian warehouses. And now the violence and fuel restrictions have exacerbated a cholera outbreak. Marceline Joseph gave her son liquids, but it was too late for the rest of her family. I saw him getting worse, so I brought him here. And when I got here, I learned that my little sister had died of cholera. Where is the Haitian government? It's been 15 months since President Jovenel Moïse was assassinated. And Haiti's caretaker, Prime Minister Ariel Henry, requested international troops to keep a peace that the government is unable to provide. Last week in New York, the international community took a first step to try and provide stabilization. For the first time in five years, the UN Security Council passed a resolution on Haiti that sanctioned gang leaders, including Barbecue and their financial sponsors. But a U.S. and Mexico resolution endorsing a foreign troop deployment to Haiti remains on hold. Do you think that it's a good idea for the UN Security Council to authorize an international mission, military mission, to go to Haiti? The question is that what choices do we have? It's not a good idea, but it's a series of bad ideas. This mission, whatever form it, it, it comes in, needs to address the social inequalities. These young men have been marginalized. Those, listen, man, it ain't no social inequality, man. It's, it's, it's sun man leadership, man. You had the sun man president, puppet from the United, from, from whatever. It didn't work. The gangs took over. It doesn't work. Nothing worked. We just, we would not have a country. It would just be a bunch of little tribes on that island. Like it is now. And, and this guy, <laughs> if he if he actually believed that, he would be running for president. But you don't see him doing that shit, do you? Well, he doesn't, he doesn't want to be the next guy on the yeah. target list, man. Exactly. 